Dear all, welcome to the lecture series of Power System Protection. In this video, I am going to discuss the importance of power system protection. Why power system protections are needed? And also, what are the different type of protective devices? And uh, the importance of power system protective devices. In the third segment, I am going to discuss what are the different causes of fault. So, these are the content of the presentation. So, first and the foremost, I am going to discuss about the need or the importance of power system protection. Let us understand why power system protection is necessary. Okay, coming into the session, the ultimate goal or the main objective of power system protection is to isolate a faulty section of electrical power system from the rest of the life system to separate the faulty portion from the healthier portion that is the ultimate goal of power system protection otherwise what what is going to happen if power system protection is not there definitely the entire system will be getting scrambled or spoiled and uh, it uh, adversely affect the safety of operating personnel and the safety of the devices definitely it adversely affect entire system that is why we require power system protection. Now, could you tell me some abnormal conditions? Yes, there are different abnormal conditions such as overcurrent, then you can call over voltage, under or over frequency, then reverse power flow. For example, actually power flow should be taken place from source to load. But in case of this reverse power flow, power flow will be taken from load to source. Instead of source to load, power flow will be starting from uh, load to source that is adversely affect then unbalanced current especially in the three phase system this unbalanced current will re will be reason for excess of temperature that is also seriously affect the power system to overcome this situation we should have the proper power system protection then power system protection ensures the continuity of the supply power system protection need to be ensured at the generation side then transmission and the distribution system why because to ensure continuity the whatever the power it is generated by power power station or generating station it has to be reached to the customer side or consumer side so maximum continuity need to be ensured there should not be any interruption or curtailment if such cases in interruption or curtailment is persisting definitely it will be affecting the economy and uh, the industrial production Okay, because all industrial units are merely depending on uh, electric power. Now, it improves the system stability. Overall system stability will be improved if you have a well versatile power system protective system. These are the importance or need for power system protection. Hope you have understood why power system protections are needed. Now, let me list out the importance of protective devices. Protective devices are highly unavoidable in power system protection. The devices that are used to protect the power system against fault are generally known as protection device or you can call protective devices. Protection device or protective devices, both are same. Can you tell me some examples of protective devices? Of course, protective relay, then circuit breakers. There are different relay and the circuit breakers are available, then isolators. Okay, these are the fuses, these are the different type of protective devices. Let me have an observation on how protective relay is going to operate. You know that relay and a circuit breaker that perform combined operation. Consider a bus bar. Hope you know what is a bus bar. A current carrying conductor you can able to see. This is a bus bar actually. Okay, bus bar. Okay. Say this is a bus. Bus will accomplish uh, the connection between two components okay from one bus to another bus there will be a conductor there are a lo uh, lot of conductors that will be starting from one bus to another bus okay for normal condition the current will be passing through this bus there is no issue for a healthier condition that you have to remember now let us consider one example immediately a fault is occurred at this particular conductor a fault is occurred in this bus we can call it a fault is occurred here that means the 
tremendous growth of current will be taken place over there excess of current that is called a fault i will discuss what is a fault after uh, after after the session suppose a fault is occurring over here look at this a fault same manner a fault is occurring over there definitely there will be bulk amount of current over current okay you know there is there will be over current that will be happening over there so by using current transformer by using current transformer the excess of current will be detected okay so the current transformer is usually connect series to the conductor current transformer detects excess of current then that will be directly connected to relay coil if the current is exceeded more than that of the value certain value preset value the relay coil is getting energized once the relay coil is getting energized this contact tripping coil the tripping contact will be closed over the initially it is in open condition in uh, normally open condition afterwards the tripping coil become uh, closed condition it is normally open then uh, after relay coil is getting energized due to the attractive principle electromagnetic attraction it, uh, it uh, the contact will be closed once the contact is closed the entire supply that will be applied over there due to that continuous current will be passing through the trip coil okay then trip coil is getting magnetized or you can call it as trip coil is getting energized obviously trip coil is getting energized due to that what is going to happen the cb contact that is getting open initially cb contact is in closed condition okay cb contact is in closed condition initially afterwards what is going to happen the cb contact is getting opened once the cb contact is getting opened what is the impact c uh, this is actually the faulty portion we can say this is a faulty portion faulty portion okay faulty part this will be the healthier part healthy part healthy part circuit breaker is getting opened so that uh, supply the current won't flow through that particular part it's just like an it will act as an open switch initially circuit breaker will be uh, normally closed once the trip coil is energized means uh, the cb contact is getting open once the cb contact is getting open no current will be flowing over there therefore faulty part will be isolated from the healthy portion so this is the way how relay and circuit breaker is going to operate this is one of the example of a protective device i hope you understood how does the protective device operates the thing is uh, initially uh, cb contact is open and uh, the tri the tri cb contact is closed sorry the cb contact is closed initially and the trip contact is in the closed condition okay trip contact is under closed condition now a fault is occurred here look at this a fault is occurred here then ct will detect the fault thereby relay coil is getting energized once the relay coil is getting energized trip contact will be closed the circuit is getting completed there is a closed circuit circuit is getting completed thereby trip coil is getting energized once the trip coil is getting energized the cb contact is getting opened thereby the entire supply will be uh, separated and there supply there is isolation it creates an isolation okay therefore healthy portion will be separated from the faulty portion so this is regarding protective devices i hope you understood how does uh, the protective devices operate so in this session i have discussed about the importance of power system protection why power system protections are uh, required afterwards i have discussed about protective devices i have listed out a few protective devices such as relay circuit breakers etc how the relay and the circuit breaker is getting operated for a simple bus i have just shown one example also okay then these are my references in the coming session i am going to discuss about the causes of fault if you are having any questions you can put up in the comment box finally thank you for watching this video